This week on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture, I am tackling a vintage buffet that is in major need of some love. Hey guys, welcome in. It's Kara with Lemons to Lemonade Furniture. This week's flip was a vintage piece. My neighbor brought it to me. It looks like it's been made over a few times before, and I'll be the first to admit this. This is probably one of the hardest projects that I have ever tackled, but I cannot wait to show you the end result. So let's go out to the garage. This piece of furniture was brought to me for free from one of my wonderful neighbors. She had purchased it from an antique store a while back and from what I can tell it's been refinished at least twice. It's got blue paint on the top and then white paint underneath that and from looking at all the drawer joints in the back of this piece and the insides this is definitely a handmade item. But with all this paint on the top I've got my work cut out for me. So I'll start this flip just like I do all of the rest. We'll give it a good cleaning with some simple green to get off all the grease and grime. This piece sat in my garage for a bit because, well, I was kind of intimidated by it. It's just not really my style or what I normally flip, so I just didn't have a lot of ideas on what to do. But one day I just looked at it and I knew exactly what direction I needed to take this in, so today I'm going to give it a shot. This piece does not have the original knobs on it whatsoever. These were just added as, um, you know, as the piece got restored multiple times. So we're going to get rid of these add-ons today and I'm gonna see if I can find something that's a little more original to the piece. I'm not so sure that I'll be able to, but I'm definitely gonna look because I want to keep this as original and rustic looking as I can. I think that'll sell really well for me in my area. Since I'm trying to restore this piece to as much of the original finish as I can, I'm going to use some chemical stripper and go over what's left over on the paint. I've got a little, like more than half left on the top that needs to come off and then obviously the entire front and both the sides are going to need to be stripped. I'll start out by using some quick strip chemical stripper. I've got my gloves and my mask on. You don't want to get any of this on your skin. I'll apply it everywhere there is blue paint using a chip brush. That way I can just throw it away when I'm done. Once I have a liberal amount of stripper on the top of this, I'll cover it with some saran wrap just to make sure that it stays moist. This dries out really quickly for me in my Texas heat, so if you live in a cooler climate, you may not need to do this step with the saran wrap. I waited about 40 minutes and I noticed that this paint just wasn't budging at all. It didn't even look like it was coming up. I had never seen paint do this before underneath Chemical Stripper. I added just a little bit more to see if I just needed to get it a little more damp, move it around a little bit. But once again, nothing. This blue paint was not budging whatsoever.
this is not working for me and it is plenty damp um, it's not dry at all and I'm barely getting any of this paint off so the stripper's not gonna work I'm gonna have to go to plan B on this one So I lost an entire day with that chemical stripper not working. I ended up just having to remove all of it with some mineral spirits and some steel wool. I just scrubbed it all off and then I had to let it dry overnight completely and then start all over the next day. So basically I lost a whole 24 hours from trying to use that stripper. I let the mineral spirits dry overnight. I got back out to the garage in the morning and now I'm gonna to try to remove this paint with my carbide scraper. I haven't used this scraper very often and it took me a little bit to find the rhythm to it. It did remove the paint, but if I am being totally honest with you all, I think I found one of my least favorite things to do in life. The side panels of this piece were made of plywood, so the paint was really difficult to scrape off of that part. Every few hours I would stop and get my shop vac out and vacuum up all my shavings just so I could see my progress. Uh, hoping every time that it was going to give me more motivation to keep going on this piece. It was really tough to get all of this sanded off. The drawers for this piece were much easier to remove the paint on. This came off really easy on all of the drawers, thank goodness. Hey guys, if you haven't heard, I recently launched a behind the scenes Patreon channel where we do a deep dive into every week what's in my garage. We cover budgeting tips and tricks, weekly chats of what I'm selling and what I'm selling it for, when I'm buying and what's in style, and so much more. For a short period of time, you can try it out for free for seven days. That's right, you get all my behind the scenes content to watch for free for seven days. We'd love to have you jump in and join in the conversation. I've attached the links below and I hope to see you there. With the majority of my blue paint removed, I got out my 3x4 Ray Surf Prep Sander and a 180 grit sanding pad to smooth down the surface and just remove any of the paint that got left behind. I'll also clean up the sides of the drawers the best I can with the sander. I am now on day four or five of sanding this. I have lost track of how many days of sanding this has taken. At this point, I'm happy with where it is. It's not perfect, but I am literally just costing myself money and time because I've got other pieces in my garage that need to get out of here. So I need to just keep moving with this one and I planned on doing a paint wash all, on all of it, but because there's still bits of blue left that I just can't get off with my scraper or my sander, we're just gonna have to do a plan B and it's gonna look a little different than I thought it would, but it's still gonna be really pretty. I just have to make a business decision at this point that I've spent enough days sanding and scraping this and it's time to start painting. 
I've wiped down my piece of furniture with a dry cloth, but I'm gonna go over it again with some mineral spirits just to make sure that I have all of that sanding dust off of there. Since I did so much sanding and scraping on this piece, you can still see how dirty the cloth is at the end and why this was really important. I don't want any of the stuff left behind going into my paint. So it's a good idea that I went over this one more time with some mineral spirits. On all of the areas where I still have some blue and white paint lurking around, I'm going to use my Lily Moon Stain Blocking Primer just to make sure that none of this old finish chooses to resurface once my new finish is applied. I'm going in with my Zebra Palm Pro Angled Brush so that I can get nice and close into these edges. I only want to prime the plywood, not the solid wood that is around the edge. We're going to do something a little different with that. You can see when we're a little closer up where some of that blue paint still is and that is where I'm going to make sure I use this stain blocking primer. I let my primer dry overnight and so now I'm ready to go in with my paint. I know it kind of seems counterproductive to do all that sanding and then paint over the top of it, but the truth is these parts that you see that are primed, I just couldn't get enough of the blue and white pa past paint off of it to do the paint wash that I really wanted to do. You were gonna be able to see that blue still poke through. And so I just had to make the exec executive decision with my time that these parts that I couldn't get perfect, I'm gonna have to paint in a color that is the exact same color that I'm gonna be using for my paint wash. So at the end, this should all come together. I wanted a color that was almost identical to the wood on this piece of furniture, so I went with Lily Moon's Rattan from the Opulent Collection. I'll be sure to link everything below that I used on this project. But you can see just by me putting this on that it is so close to the color of the wood. Now that all the blue paint has been covered up, I'm going to take 50% Lily Moon Rattan paint and 50% water and mix it up into a paint wash for my solid wood surfaces. This is just going to help hide any imperfections that are left over on the wood, but still show a lot of that beautiful wood grain. I've wet the top of the dresser with my spray bottle because it'll help give my paint wash a little more open time before it dries out. I like to do everything in small sections when I do a paint wash and because things dry so quickly here, once I get that small section done, I'll wipe it back with a dry rag and just keep moving. You can see here in the difference in the wood tones that a paint wash is a great choice when you're just wanting to help remove some of those yellow and orange tones that you have on the wood surface.
I want to save this cute little keyhole detail on here so I'll just carefully go around this so I don't get any paint on it. The slides and glides on the drawers are really dry, so I'm going to freshen those up with some Howard Speed and Wax so they'll slide really nice. I've got some last few finishing touches to add to this piece. I really want this one to look classy and elegant and not just blend into the background. So we're gonna do a little something extra just to give it a bit more pizzazz. I found this flower and ivy stencil at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use my paint wash and water it down just a little bit so that it's very faint and apply the stencil to the bottom two drawers. I'm using a foam roller to gently roll this design on. I really did not want to have to buy knobs for this one, so I went through my entire stash of old knobs and I found all of these leftovers, and these are gonna be perfect. They're just raw wood. I got them from Amazon, so I'll link them below. I'm gonna use the paint wash on top of these and they will look super nice and just neutral on this piece. The paint that I've used has a built-in top coat, but on the raw wood areas where I watered the paint down, and especially on the drawers with that light stencil detail, I'm going to apply some Lily Moon Stellar Shield just to make sure that this has some major staying power. I'm using my favorite top coat sponges. You get them just a little bit damp so that they're pliable and apply your top coat. Last little finishing touches, I'm using some gold gilding wax just to highlight those little keyholes. Let's take one last look at our starting point. Boy, this one was tough for me, but I'll tell you this, I learned a lot of new skills and I really learned to stretch my design concepts. Even though it was a lot of work, I was really pleased with the way this one turned out. I can't wait for you guys to see it.
This guy right here was a complete labor of love. It sat in my garage for a really long time because I just didn't have any ideas what to do with this. But as I started sanding and stripping away all those layers of blue and white paint, it just sort of started to come to life. And that's what's so fun about flipping furniture. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to leave me a comment below whether or not you like this new style that I created today, and I'll see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.